Okay, so here we are at the irrigation controller in the Lifescape Garden on campus at City College. And this is looking beautiful. Uh, last two years ago when I taught this class, this was a, a pretty much a disaster zone, but Lewis Daniel has fixed it. I've gotten things looking really professional in here and I'm very impressed with the look. Here's a map that shows the layout of the uh, irrigation in the garden. Uh, it's a nice CAD generated map with color coordinated, color uh, designated zones and all the zones of the clock are noted on the map. So you can tell which zone corresponds to which part of the garden. That's just super professional and super handy if you're trying to work on an irrigation system to have that um, key is just brilliant and so helpful because you spend so much time trying to figure out where different stations are when you're new to a, a, a system so that key is just fantastic here's the irrigation controller it's a weathermatic controller which is a really good quality uh, irrigation controller the smart line is a, a great uh, line of controller this irrigation controller has the ability to um, have a weather sensor connected to it that will modulate the programming of the of the controller itself and uh, if we open the panel here we can see behind this is the little module for the weather sensor and there's a cable that comes out of the clock and goes to the remote weather sensor and we can show you a picture of that little sensor but that's detecting temperature and uh, percent humidity and that kind of thing, rainfall, and then feeding that information to the clock to modulate the programming of the clock. So if it's extra hot and dry, the program might be boosted. If it's rain, it has rained and is foggy and cool, the program might be slightly reduced by the, by the weather module. So that's a great feature that makes this clock a smart controller. Uh, it's also been outfitted with the smart link connection which allows for remote control of the irrigation controller um, via an app which is another really nice evolution in irrigation control technology we now have the ability to modulate and control uh, irrigation controllers remotely and this is linked in to have that capacity so just to take a quick look at the clock uh, let's look in the wiring. We've talked about wiring for irrigation controllers. Um, there's quite a number of stations in this garden, so that's why you see all of these colored wires arrayed. It looks like there's 22 um, different stations uh, on this clock. Uh, yes, we're up to, up to 22, even 23 is occupied there. No, that's 22. Anyway, lots of lots of lateral uh, valves in this garden. Um, one thing we want to notice is the common wire. By by custom, the common wire is the white wire. So we, if you're running irrigation cable by convention, the white wire will be the common wire. It's important to to stick to that convention because it allows for the next irrigation specialist who comes along behind you to understand which is the common wire. It's very important to keep the white wire as the common wire. These white wires are all bundled together. Each one of those goes out to all the different manifolds in the garden. And they come together here at the clock and are bundled and then there's a single lead that's wired into the common uh, portal on the clock. So that's our common wire and each one of these represents a different zone of the clock a different station on the on the controller so when the controller wants to initiate valve number one it will propagate a, a signal send a, uh, an electric impulse down this number one cable here this dark purpley blue cable and that'll go out to the valve in the field the solenoid will be energized the steel plunger will pull up off of that little pilot valve that we talked about the valve will pop open and the irrigation system will run and then as soon as this the clock turns off that signal going through the wire the valve will, will shut itself again and be closed so um, that's the the way these the signals are sent out they return that impulse it goes out through the uh, valve wire, returns through the common wire to the clock to complete that circuit. So that's why all the common wires are bound together and they run back to the clock and they go to the same 
connection on the on the clock, that common return line from each valve. So um, the other thing we wanted to look at was the uh, pump and master valve terminal on the clock. That would be this little terminal here. Uh, it seems that the, the I believe this garden is equipped with a master valve, but I don't think that the master valve is connected to the system because this portal here is empty. And this is where the wire that would go to the master valve would be connected. That would uh, allow the clock to only open the master valve when another lateral valve was open, so that if there was ever a leak in the system, it would only leak when the, when the system was running. It wouldn't be leaking continuously, even if all the lateral valves were closed. So uh, we talked about master valves. That's where the wire would go for the master valve. It would use the same common as the rest of the laterals. So anyway, that's our clock. Um, you see the little fancy uh, weather station module plugged in there and the cable going out to the weather station. And um, otherwise, very great, good uh, controller, really nice programming uh, capabilities. But let's take a look at some of the wiring in the garden since we've looked at the controller.